What's up, Lemon Heads? Welcome back to another episode of From the Yellow Chair. I'm Emily. And I'm Crystal. And this week, we're going to talk about measuring success, processes, and the Praxis S10 way of life. We are sitting down with the industry goat. (laughs) Yeah, goat. We're here today to really share some insight on how to make yourself really feel better about overall business practices how to be how should we measure one of the biggest things that Emily and I see with contractors that come to Lemon Seed is just some lack of just any sort of guidance on moving their business forward guys we have a great guest in the virtual lemonade stand today let's get to it and sip some lemonade let's do it All right, so joining us today in the lemonade stand is Terry Nicholson. And like we mentioned, he is the GOAT, the greatest (laughs) of all time of the heating and air conditioning industry. So those are my words. Welcome. Yeah, those are my words, you know. Well, uh, thank you for having me here. And I I don't think that's worthy of the GOAT. Uh, I I think you may be confusing your animals there. I think most people would qualify me as a donkey. All right. Uh, but, but not the, the goat, but I'm very flattered by that. And I guess that's your way of just getting <laughs> your guests jacked yeah. up, if you will. So we do a great job today. Is that is that what you all, well, is that your more. secret? Yeah. yeah. And you know, I I am a big fan. Um, I love the directness. I love the raw feedback that I've seen you give Trey, um, my brother at McWilliams and Son, and I've learned a lot. And so I just think too many people try to sugarcoat stuff. So I'm excited uh, to have you here. And, and tell us a little bit about stuff but I want some of our listeners that maybe they don't haven't had the pleasure of meeting you to kind of learn a little bit about you and what authority you bring to the conversation okay well I can do that uh, I know you're going to ask me about myself so I'll just start with the basics I have blue eyes I stand four foot 18 inches high You know, I talk funny. I'm hard to understand. So if there's something I say you can't understand me, just raise your hand and say, hey, can you repeat that? I don't understand your hillbilly slang there. Is that what you were looking for from me? If they've been listening to Crystal and I, they can get through the hillbilly slang. Yeah. Yeah, the accent there. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. All right. So uh, I guess uh, when you ask me that, you probably want to know a bit, a little bit about my background and this. Why yeah, I'm that'd be today. great. Is that right? Okay. Well, you know, you, you start out with those tough questions because it's always embarrassing to talk about yourself, or at least I find it embarrassing to talk about myself. Uh, but uh, I guess what I'll do is I will share with you. I, I think you've heard me, Crystal, talk about numerous times. I've been very fortunate to have a great mentor in my life and got into this industry and he took me under his wing and became a friend, a mentor and helped me. And his name's Jim Abrams. But uh, anyway, and probably lots of people in this industry know who Jim is. So I've been very fortunate there. I would call him the, yeah. the GOAT, the greatest of all time. And I was just fortunate to be, you know, on the sideline helping him build a business there. But uh, anyway, the way Jim would always introduce me. And so it's easier to do it that way. He would say, you know, Terry is the only individual that has been an owner or a co-founder or on the executive level team of the largest privately owned contracting business in North America, the industry's first consolidation effort in the industry, on the executive level team of a utility company that was in the in-home service business. And at the time, we also had the largest best practice organization. Uh, I was also heading up the largest industry franchise brands. And, uh, you know, Jim calls me the industry's greatest educator. And I think that's very flattering. And I think that was probably Jim's nice way of saying, Terry, you're just old. <laughs> You've been around. Right. You've been around. <laughs> well, but you know what? There's... To, to help you brag a little bit here, there's just a lot... You've been in a lot of different seats on the bus. So I think that brings mm-hmm. invaluable... There's a lot of people right now that talk the talk. But I think there's very few people that can talk the talk because they've walked the walk. And so that's why we feel so honored to have you with us today. So, yeah. So we're excited about that. Well, I appreciate that. And it has been a pleasure to helping uh, so many people in this industry uh, achieve their dreams and goals and desires. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've been told I have just far exceeded anything I ever set out to accomplish in this world. And there's a lot of big husky (laughs) burly men that want to come up and uh, 
you know, when it's fine ladies like you, I, I kind of <laughs> welcome those. I don't put the other big guys away, but I'd much yeah. rather hug you two than, than big bro yeah. guys, all right? So let's get that straight. But, you know, that's enough about me. This podcast is really about your listeners. So what is it that you want to know that you think I can help uh, your listeners? Yeah, well, I think let's jump into, I always like to ask people this, especially people that have been around for a little bit. What do you think the biggest mistake that you see contractors making in their business today? Okay. Uh, wow. You, you yeah, start out yeah, with easy yeah. questions, don't you? I, I mean, that we, we could yeah, talk on that episodes. for days, but if I just had to go one, I think I would probably say understanding KPIs. And I know that most owners and leaders, they understand the importance of KPIs. However, there are very few people in our industry who truly understand how to use KPIs and make operational decisions to improve their business. And we're not chasing a KPI to get a number on a sheet of paper. The only reason you have a KPI is so you can look at your business and say, how can I use this number to identify what's wrong in my business? Or how can I use it once I understand something's wrong and make changes in my business? So, you know, if you go to any contractor event, uh, and I think you guys will attest to this, usually there's always some formalized cocktail party. And if there's not a formal one, an informal one Abs takes place at absolutely. the bar after the meeting. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I've seen <laughs> you too at... Uh, one of those informal events at the I, bar. Is I that call right? that my traveling deny? office. Hey, I'll meet you over there at a table. You know, there's a lot of business. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of business deals made on napkins and conversation. You know, over over a, a little table in the bar. Plenty of plenty of nights. Yeah, and we're easy to find because we're always wearing yellow. So you'll yeah. see us at the bar with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's where I've seen you and I've seen you in yellow as well. So isn't it interesting, though, that when you're at the bar or one of these cocktail parties, it's so common for what I'll call the contractor oh, bragathon to kick into high gear. I, have I you ever witnessed that I before? <laughs> and, you know, after a couple of drinks, you know, they, they not only start dis discussing KPIs, they actually start mm -hmm. bragging about them, you know. And the first guy goes, uh, you know, my KPI is X. And then the next person goes, well, my KPI yeah. is XX. And, you know, the person who goes first, no. they don't have a chance at the contractor bragathon no. at the bar. But even if they're not exaggerating, the two individuals often are using two different measurements for establishing their KPIs. And it's impossible, really, to compare KPIs of two different businesses if they're not measuring the same way. And there's always a right way to measure a KPI, and there's a wrong way to measure a KPI. And, you know, what's interesting is most contractors are just trying to figure out the meaning mm -hmm. of the KPI, let alone understand how to measure it the same way accurately. And one of the best examples I'll give you that come to mind is talking about profit percentages. I mean, you, you'll always hear that at the bar and they'll say, let's talk about, uh, you know, what's your profit percentage? And, you know, the, the guy that goes first doesn't have a chance again, but, but he says, you know, or she says, my profit percentage is 10%. Now, the next contractor says, well, my profit percentage is 20%. I'm doing mm -hmm. twice as good as you. Buy me a drink. How I, uh, I'll tell you all my I'll story. tell you how I do it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And so let me use a very simplistic example and just to make the point right here. And let's just take two companies. They're both doing a million dollars of revenue. And the first person that said I'm doing 10%, let's just say hypothetically they're earning a $200,000 salary that they're actually taking payroll out of the business on. And I'm not saying that's right or it's wrong. It's just an example. But they're taking a salary of $200,000 and they also have $100,000 EBITDA left over after all salaries and expenses have been paid. So obviously $100,000 divided by a million, that's a 10% profit company. Now, the second individual that claimed he was at 20% profitability, he takes a $200,000 salary out of the business, but he has zero EBITDA. And yet he's claiming that he's got $200,000 in profit because he counts his salary as profit. And, you know, therefore, in this example, the person that's earning 10% is actually doing much better 
than the guy who claims he's doing 20% profit. All because the company stated that they're a 20% company and they really don't understand KPIs. And salaries are not profits as everyone on this call or at least you know most of your audience mm -hmm. is going to understand that because they're smarter than the yeah. average limit <laughs> right, there, right right yes, they are <laughs> <laughs> and so you know that's what i mean by many people are tracking their kpis in yeah and one thing that I, I i've picked up on this too you know when i sit down with contractors the first thing i try to do is sum up this conversation because odds are we're not talking apples to apples most of the time so when people start right. you know spouting off numbers number one just a little side note to listeners it isn't the loud people you need to be watching out for it's those little stealthy people moving in the background. Um, I, I just remind people like, hey, if they're touting these large numbers, odds are there's somebody lurking in the background that's doing much better and moving much swifter and faster. But um, which I always get a little um, exhilarated from because I'm like, ah, there's somebody out there that's going to surprise y'all at some point. But, um, you know, I, I've, I have learned like I always try to in our own business, Emil, Emily and I, when we're looking through our own financials, we always try to make sure that every single month we're perfect those numbers and learning how do we apply those numbers but the biggest thing and I, I underline this when you said it is understanding and there's no shame in the game of not understanding and asking for guidance from good business coaches and things like that um, about hey so you know my profit percentages can you walk me through that again help me understand that again I always thought I should do it this way because this buddy right this guy that I'm friends with he told me to do it this way um, but a lot of times that's not good advice so kind of be careful who you're taking advice from there as well huh yeah absolutely and so okay so that's a good kpi for us to be looking up for well is there another one that comes to mind um that's a good kpi for contractors well the one that comes to next in mind would be your gross margin percentage because this may actually be the most common kpi mistake because most contractors and i know i shouldn't stereotype but i'm just yeah. stating the obvious here they come from the technical yeah. side of the business and, you know, if you ask a contractor, you know, what's a cost of a gallon of gas, the cost of condensing unit, refrigerant, or any other truck stock item that they have on their truck, they're probably going to be able to tell you the exact cost right to the penny mm -hmm. of how much it is. But if you ask them, what's your gross margin, you know, most of them go all over the place or the hem and haul and they say, well, it depends. And, and, you know, you don't get a straight answer. And I'm like, how could you not have a straight answer on gross margin? And see, the biggest gross margin mistake usually comes down to labor. And the reason this is so important is we're in the labor business. We've got to learn to control and manage those labor costs. And some people put field labor in direct costs, which is the right place. And some companies actually lump every single employee together, whether they're field, whether they're office, and they put them into one line item and they place those into employee wages into the overhead category of their financial statement and obviously this is really going to skew your direct or, or your gross margin if you don't have direct cost in the mm. appropriate place all right and then i guess next with that is some people when you ask them about their gross margin they have their service and their installation department all lumped together as well and I want to stress, the installation labor KPI is entirely different than the service labor installation. So when you're looking at your gross margin for one particular month, depending on how much and what type of revenue you did, may actually determine if you're lumping it together whether you had a great month or not. And the reality is you can't ever tell when you lump your service and your installation revenue combined. So really you need to separate those categories and have a gross margin for just the service revenue and just the installation revenue. And then that way you know what's truly happening in your business. So it's not enough, once again, I think you kind of said it, Crystal, on understanding your KPIs. A lot of people have this 30,000 foot view of understanding what a KPI is or, or at least knowing some numbers here. But if they don't really understand the inner workings of it, it's not going to help them improve their business. I mean, when you look at a properly designed P&L, there's approximately, depending on how much, you know, in departments you're doing, but there's probably on a normal P&L, there's probably 86 line items. 
86 different categories. And the owners who operate the largest in-home service companies in our industry, you know, people such as Jimmy Hiller or even your brother Trey McWilliams or, you know, King Goodrich, Leland Smith, Dave Geiger, they all know these KPIs by every single line item and they know what to do about them when these line items are out of whack. And, um, you know, that's the importance of it. And I know there's a lot of people and these people I just referenced, they know every line item because, you know, they're either my clients uh -huh. today or they have been my clients. So you mentioned all of these big names and these big companies, right, that know how to do it. And I'll be honest, like even sitting at a table with Trey, I'm like, okay, I'm overwhelmed. So, you know, the, you've got these new, newer businesses and maybe we've got some young business owners or young contractors, young as far as like their business, the age of their business, right? So where do you, how do you even get started? Like understanding these things, you know, that's a legitimate question. Like I don't even think to to add that question to our to our question list, but you know, how can these younger contractors that are starting their business, how do we start off correctly, Terry? Like, I don't want to be a three million dollar company before I realize I don't understand how to get my gross margin correct um, and how to pivot when I need to pivot. Okay. Well, you actually asked me two questions in, in one there, whether you realize or not. See how good you are? Economy of work. Let's, let's ask two questions. How does it all start? And how did these guys all start? Well, you know, a little history of the industry here. and Not a lot of people recognize this. You know, there's a lot of consultants in the world today. Uh, and there's and you got to be careful. You made this statement earlier, Chris. So you got to be mm -hmm. careful who you listen to. There's a lot of consultants today in our business that actually operated failed businesses, went bankrupt, couldn't make it in the industry. And they went, you know what? It's easier to make money preying off contractors than it is shots actually fired, doing shots the contracting fired. world. <laughs> I said shots fired, shots What's fired. That? It's true. It's so true, <laughs> though. It's so true. Yeah. And, and I'm not firing any shots at anyone. I'm just I'm just jumping on, on the facts here and see our business model has always been we're not consultants. We're not teaching theory. We're not teaching hype. We're, we're teaching people the real life practical application. And what most people don't understand in this industry is Jim Abrams and John Young formed the very first best practice organization of our kind in this entire industry. So all these organizations that are out here that promote themselves as a best practice, they are a derivative, a spinoff, a copy division of some sort of Jim Abrams. Now, I was fortunate enough to be working with Jim and be a part of that organization as well. So that's where it all started. It, it started with Jim Abrams. And that's why those names that I referenced, they were all like perhaps mm -hmm. many of your listeners today. I mean, I, I met, you know, all those people I just referenced when they were mm -hmm. small companies. Some of those companies have been our clients at different times because they've built a great business, sold it, retired, rode off in the sun, come <laughs> back and joined us again. All right. And build another great business up. And, you know, I would categorize Trey as a young guy inside that group as well. And I've shared that with Trey before. I said, you know, I know all these guys that you're running in the big circles with today and competing with. And I said, Trey, you're a bigger business than all those guys I just referenced were yes. at his yeah. age. All right. So Trey's on the fast track of success. So I'm not sure. I, I know I got excited and went off on, <laughs> on a, a tangent. Did yeah, I answer your I, I question? Think, I think, you know, to this, like I say, like people like Trey and people, even like people like Jim Abrams, which I, I mean, they kind of move a little stealthier oh, yeah. than, you know, constantly, promoting themselves it's more about and trey told me me and emily both this when we started lemon seed he said it is your responsibility to know your numbers not your team not the financial department but at any point these are things that you guys have to know uh, we have a weekly financial meeting we just got off of that um call we'll have another one in the morning to go over some things because that's how important it is and we preach this at lemon seed because when we are trying to make you said this earlier understanding your kpis to be able to make decisions at lemon seed when we we are um, collaborating with our clients to help their marketing get better. You, I, you, I, every day of my life, am shocked at the amount of people when I say, okay, so what's your revenue goal for this month? Eh, 
I don't know, around 240 ish would be good. And I'm like, oh, my, it makes me clutch my pearls as I say, like, no, sir, no, ma'am. Um, around 240 is not a good number. And then my team makes fun of me because I say all the time, man, if you didn't know that May was bad until the first week of June, we've got problems, you know. And But I'm shocked at it every day. Yeah. And so. Um, I think we're kind of getting around to like best practice groups are a good way to start. Yeah. So how do programs like Praxis S10 actually help contractors? Like you've already shared so much and it's a whole wealth of knowledge, but I feel like the whole Praxis S10 program has so much more. So how do these programs help contractors at any size? I mean, does it really work? You know, I mean, I hate to be that way, but like do these, does Praxis S10 really work? (laughs) Okay. Well, your economy of words again. <laughs> Emily asked me a question first, and she went first, and then you asked me a second question. Okay, so I want to okay. answer Emily's okay. first, if that's okay. Okay. So, Emily, to answer your question is, um, I think I want to give you the explanation of our name, if that's okay, because I think that I will answer that. it. All right. You know, and what Praxis S10 really is about is, you know, it's more than a name, or at least it is to us. And Praxis and just the word praxis, and I understand it's an uncommon word and very few people actually have ever heard of that word and they know what it means, but the word praxis means the practical application of knowledge. The practical application of knowledge. That's what the word praxis is. Now, the S, I bet you can guess what that stands for, Either Emily. service or steps. Well, I should have asked you that question, Emily. <laughs> so, if you call for a lifeline, I'm going to give you a chance to call for a lifeline. Terry, Terry give me a lifeline. Me. I need a lifeline. <laughs> okay. The, the S stands for success. Oh, yes. Achieving, I should have known that, yes. <laughs> achieving the desired results or achieving victory. Now, the 10, on a scale of 1 to 10... 10 is commonly accepted as the perfect score. So when you put the components of our name together and you're part of Praxis S10, what you can rest assured on is this. You're not going to be taught theory. You're not going to be taught taught hype. You're not going to be taught motivation. Now, you may get inspired and motivated, but we're not teaching you theory and theoretical things that this might work, this may not work. We're not going to teach you the hype you're going to gain real-world contracting experience that is knowledge that has been time-tested and evidence to help you achieve success. And with regards to the 1 to 10, and I think you all recognize, and maybe I have, you know, I haven't said that, my business partner at Praxis S10 is Jimmy Hiller. And Jimmy Hiller and I, and you probably heard of Hiller PHC, Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, Electric, he's Mm -hmm. a regional powerhouse, but he is operating a day-to-day business doing exactly what all your listeners are doing. So Praxis S10 is the educational arm that is teaching these real life principles. And Jimmy is over here demonstrating these real life principles. So if you want to see it in action, you can come see exactly what Jimmy's using in his business. We're going to, you know, you can get it two sides. You can hear the knowledge, but you can see it in action as well. So Jimmy and I have created these 12 pillars of success that we call them. And if you will set your ego aside and just follow the proven roadmap that Praxis S10 teaches, you can, and you know, you got to set your ego aside and evaluate yourself, but that's where the 1 to 10 comes in. If you can get above a 9.5 or higher on a 1 to 10 scale in the 12 pillars, you're going to be highly successful. You're not going to have to worry about making money. You're not going to have to worry about how am I going to make payroll this week. You're not going to have to worry about, are you growing your business? You're not going to have to worry about, how do I recruit the best people? And you're going to be having a lot of fun in this business, and you're going to own a thriving, growing, prosperous business. And it's not this trial and error experience that so many people have to go through. And that's what Praxis S10 is. And, you know, now I say that, I forgot one key point. When you're part of the Praxis S10, We're going to actually help you with the deficiencies that you have in your business, identify those. But not only are we going to help you identify those, we're also going to give you the exact tools and resources to correct the deficiencies that will help you advance your business. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a new member launch, and that's the first thing that that when people join Praxis S10, the first thing they do is come to a three-day training program. And, you know, it's rather humorous because there's some people that, uh, you know, 
they see themselves as a competitor to Praxis S10. I don't really think we have any competitors because I think we are the only people who do what we do today. And we just do a poor job of it, uh, not beating yeah. our chest, Crystal, on that social media like so many other people do. And we kind of take your approach. You know, those who have to beat their chest and say how great they are, they're probably not that great. And we just pretty well let our, you know, walk be from our clients and watching success and watching Jimmy Healer and doing what he's doing. But anyway, a lot of, of these competitors or emulators will say, yeah, you join Praxis 10 and you're never going to see Terry. Well, the reality is, if you're in part of Praxis 10, when you come to new member launch, you're going to see Terry there every single day because I love to help people get started on the right track. And but anyway, I kind of got off on a tangent there. We had a thirty million dollar company, and you and I both know there's not that many people in our industry that Correct. achieve thirty million. You know, if we really narrowed it down, it's probably less than one percent of all in-home service providers get above thirty million. And this individual came up to me at the end of the session. He said, "You know, I'm in multiple best practice groups today," and he said, "This is the first program I've ever been through that told me exactly." how to operate an in-home service business. And he said, you know, you start out telling us this is the absolute first thing you do in the morning when you show up at your office. And then you tell me all the in-between. And then the last thing you do is before you turn it off for the night and close down your mind and close your cell phone to go, you know, and it doesn't have to be at night when you go to sleep. It could be before you leave the office yeah. or it could be at, at home. But I know many of us still taking phone calls late at night. But he, if you do this last thing and what he said was this is the first organization that's ever told me from morning to end of day, this is exactly what you do. And he said, so I didn't even realize there were so many things that I could be doing to enhance the success of my business. And he got so expi or inspired. He said, I'm writing a new plan. I'm going to be a $100 million yeah. business now that I'm going to implement all those principles. So it's rewarding. It's yeah. nice. It's humbling. And, well, uh, I, I've, know, I've it, had many a conversation at different best practice groups. And, and to be fair, they all serve a different purpose. Right. Um, and I think you have to know what you're expecting to get out of one. But I described Praxis this way the other day to a client um, that I felt like really needed literal guidance. Like I want you to do one steps one through 10. Not every best practice group gives the actuals, just like you said. A lot of it is like a buffet of options. Well, some people, I mean, and there's listeners that are listening right now um, that struggle with decisiveness. Mm -hmm. Or they, they um, what is it called when you are frozen because you get paralysis by analysis. Yeah. You know, they're so busy saying, well, this one does this and but this one does this, that they literally are frozen from growth because they just can't make a decision. Um, or, or they're wimpy. Um, and they need to make some hard decisions. Um, I might slightly be talking to myself. They need to make some hard decisions, but they're like, uh, I don't know. And, you know, I think Praxis, I, and I'm not just bragging on Praxis because you're on here. Many people have heard me say this. It's a way of life. Praxis S10 is a way of life, and it's a way, a literal roadmap. You said, well, I go follow the roadmap, and it will take you there. Some people really jive with that style. Some people can't really get over their ego enough. They are they think they know a lot. I deal with contractors every day. That I'm about to step on some toes, but I deal with contractors every day that are 30-year-old companies, and they're at $1.5 million, and they will hire a lemon seed to help them market and then balk and push us at every single recommendation that we make. And it takes everything in my soul to not say, sir, if you understood marketing, you would not be at $1.5 million after 30 years of being in business. But here we are. Here we are. So I know that they know that they should know their numbers or adjust their marketing or change their pricing. Sometimes it's just literally they are in their own way. Um, and earlier on the call, you mentioned and said, you know, a lot of these guys really come from a technical background. And I say this. Just because you're the best shortstop on the team does not mean you need to be the coach. And so sometimes it is about right. learning, like, am I the right person as the owner of the business? Am I the right person to drive my business towards growth? And so I think when you enter into programs like Praxis S10 and you attend, I've been to a Praxis event um, and the content is good and thick and applicable and um, it's it's 
fast. I laughed because I, I, I had a friend that met me there. Um, she and I both so serve on the women at HVACR board. And so she and I met and she goes, well, you know, we're starting at seven in the morning. I said, no, and Terry, I don't, I'm not surprised that this conference is like rocking and rolling by seven in the morning because we're burning daylight, baby. Like we got to get up and get moving. Um, but I just, I want my listeners to understand like this is going to get a little corny, but there is hope. And there is guidance to correcting your business. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to find, seek out the right partners like a Praxis S10 that are going to give you what you literally, literally need to sit at your desk and do. Not theory and not a buffet of options, you know. And so and I think mm -hmm. Terry kicked it off with kind of a key point. If you can lay your ego aside. You know, I think that's a crucial part to being able to like receive the knowledge and to apply that change and stuff. Um, and so I think that kind of just kicks back to your question a long time ago, Crystal. But like, does Praxis S10 really work? <laughs> okay, well, we'll answer that, Deb. Ed. And let me answer it this way. What Praxis S10 teaches, it's really easy to do from my perspective. It is really easy, but it's also really easy not to do. So are you going to take that 15 minutes? And I was talking about that last thing of the day, for example. Will you take that 15 minutes at the last of the day before you shut it down to do that action step? Or are you going to watch the mm, Modern Family rerun? You know, and that's an option. That's a choice. And so much of success just comes down to the will to do what is necessary. So if you buy a Peloton, and you use it to hang your clothes on. And obviously, I've got a Peloton and I ride on it and I, I, it takes my mind off stuff. But, you know, if you use it as a coat hanger or clothes hanger, it's probably not going to help you. But to receive any health benefits, you know, you got to jump up there on that Pel Peloton, easy for me to say, and you got to start pedaling. And I want to stress, I don't own stock in Peloton. I don't get endorsed here. It's just a, a method I found to help me exercise. But it's easy to start pedaling. There's even a five minute pedal program. Can you believe that? You can own a pedal or a Peloton and just pedal for five minutes a day. So it'd be easy to pedal for five minutes a day, but it's also easy not to pedal for five minutes a day. There's always reasons and you can always come up with excuses why I can't find five minutes to ride my Peloton today. And that's really the best way I can describe Praxis S10. It's easy to do, but it's easy not to do as well. The formula for contracting is really, you got to have the knowledge. And if you have the knowledge of what it takes to operate a successful business, for example, if you already know those 12 principles of success that Jimmy and I have laid out, it's now a question of, do you have a plan to help you achieve what you want? So you got to have a plan. And then what you have to have is you have to bring management expertise to it. And if you do that, you're going to have success. All right. So you got to have that knowledge, but you got to bring the will to follow the plan. We can even help you build the plan, but you got to have the will to follow the plan and the will to manage your business every day. And for those who are willing to do it, they're going to achieve. I like Crystal, you know, I'm commonly saying over and over again, maximum yes. yield success. Yes. But so it, it will work if you work the plan. If you use Praxis S10 as a coat hanger, clothes hanger, and just point at it. That's it's right. And I think you probably, that. you know, kind of like Crystal said, the Praxis way of life, but encompassing all the things. Like you mentioned the five minutes on the Peloton. I think it can also be easy. Well, what's five minutes going to do? Like I'm not going to drop 100 pounds by doing five minutes. But in reality, what that five minutes leads to is better habits that eventually lead up to, you know, exercising more and eating better. And, things, you know, and then you see the big loss of weight or whatever your goal is same thing in business i think i think you have to take those right. small steps it's not this one giant this fixes everything it's those small little steps that lead up to it and so you have to be committed to it every step of the way whatever that process might be big or small yeah well and, and i wish i would have said <laughs> that because that's really what business is it's these little minor disciplines that are repeated over and over and over again. In our business, very seldom is it we do one great thing and we just achieve right. tremendous success. No, it's not that. It's these little minor decisions that we make over and over and over as we go throughout our day that leads to this wonderful Yeah, I mean, you just rebuild business. the puzzle every day. 
putting all the right pieces together. Mm -hmm. Well, the moral of today's episode, I have to say, and my pastor says this, even a good excuse is still an excuse as to not knowing your numbers, not utilizing resources that are closest to you. Um, If I've learned anything today, I feel like I better go back and learn Profit, profit percentages and gross margins for lemon seed because I feel like Trey's going to be asking me those questions really soon. But well, Terry, thank you so much for joining us and and visiting with us and those that are listening. Um, if they wanted to get in touch with you, Terry, or get in touch and get more information about Praxis Praxis S ten, we will include it in the show notes. But how how would you like for them to reach out and like how does that work? Is it a you know a, how does it work for them to hear more about it? Well, obviously your friends are my (laughs) friends, Crystal. So uh, anybody who wants to reach us, you can go on contractorstrong.com. That's contractor. And I think most of us know how to spell (laughs) contractor and contractor strong, just like you strong women on this phone or podcast today. So contractorstrong.com. And there's a segment on there where they can actually request a strategic mentoring with myself or one of my team members. And we'd be help or happy to help them do it, analyze their business and even see if there's even the potential that they can improve their business. If there is, we'd love to help you. And if nothing else, you know, if we can, <laughs> at least you'll know and we'll tell you that you're Doing well. Keep up the good work. Awesome. Well, Terry, thank you again. I know, like I I say this again, and I know it's hard to take things like this, but I appreciate you being on our our podcast. I know how busy you are. I mean, you're a pretty big deal to be at conferences and things like that. And so I really appreciate it. I've gotten to know you a little bit over the past from working so closely with Trey, and you've really brought a wealth of knowledge um, to me personally. And I know that Emily's gotten to hear a lot of that as well. And so we're just thankful for your friendship and for uh, what mentorship that I've gotten to be a part of and so all right well thank you for listening to another episode of from the yellow chair if you enjoyed this episode we would love for you to consider writing a review give us a follow on all the social media platforms and as always thanks for sipping some lemonade we'll see you next time see you later